All right then, so matrix inverses are great, they're wonderful, they're useful, but how do you compute them? Well, it's not easy, but it's also not impossible. Let's think about how to compute matrix inverses, reducing it down to something we do know how to do, namely solving AX equals B. Let's just set up the problem in one direction. Let's say A times A inverse equals the identity matrix. Write out what that means in an explicit example, a three by three example, where we have unknowns in all the entries of A inverse. And now what I'm gonna do is think about this problem, uh, something like uh, three different instances of AX equals B. I have to solve A times the first column of A inverse equals uh, one zero zero, and then times the second column is zero one zero, and times the third column is zero zero one. That's solving three instances of AX equals B, where the Bs are the three basis vectors. But now, instead of solving each one individually, we're going to solve them all at the same time using parallel row reduction. Let's see how that works in this example. Let us, instead of having an augmented matrix with one column, let's augment it with all three columns for what we want to get. Namely, we're augmenting by the identity matrix. Okay, so I've got my matrix A on the left, the identity matrix on the right, and now let's start row reducing. I'm gonna subtract twice row one from row two and add four times row one to four, three. Now we've done the uh, row reduction associated with this matrix before, so you're not gonna be surprised at what is about to follow. But notice that when we do that row reduction, we have to perform it on this matrix augmented matrix. So we have to carry along all three columns on the right-hand side. So when I add four times row two to row three, I'm getting the left-hand side to an upper triangular matrix, um, but I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not quite done yet, even after I rescale, because we're not gonna do back substitution at this point. What we're going to do, and this is very important, is we're going to keep on row reducing this matrix until we get an identity on the left-hand side. So take a look at the third column. What we're going to do is clear out the zeros above the diagonal by subtracting row three from row one and row two. That's gonna clear out those zeros above the diagonal. I'm getting things a little bit closer to having an identity matrix on the left-hand side. Of course, we have to do the same thing to the right-hand side of this augmented matrix. And yes, there's a lot of fractions involved here, but that's what happens when you compute matrix inverses. I only have one thing left to do, that's subtract three times row two from row one. And on the left-hand side, we get the identity matrix. And, and so what? Oh wait, that right-hand side is the answer. If you write out what all these equations mean in these three instances of AX equals B, that is the inverse of A. And in general, what you do to compute the inverse of a square matrix A is you augment it with an identity matrix on the right and then just row reduce like crazy. Do a complete row reduction so that you get the identity matrix on the left. That gives you the inverse of A on the right. Is it easy? No, it's computationally expensive, but you do it once and then you've got it.